Today, we're going to be talking about five or six things that you need to buy in GTA 5 to make millions of dollars. Obviously, to make money, you have to spend some money, and if you don't, you're going to be stuck doing missions and races when they're double money, and that'll be the only way you can make money. There's some things in this game that are great to make money, and some things that just aren't. So we're going to be going over those today. I hope you enjoy, and let's get it started. First thing that you guys are going to want to buy is going to be a terabyte. You could purchase it on Warstock Cash and Carry for about 1.4 million dollars and if you put some upgrades on it, it'll be around 3.4 to 3.5 million. Now with the terabyte, you're also going to be tying in some VIP work and the reason why it's such a good way to make money is because you do it all in free mode, you could do it in a private session as well if you really wanted to. The missions that you're going to be doing are diamond shopping and robbery in progress from the terabyte and then from the VIP work menu, you're going to be doing headhunter and Sightseer. Each of these missions will pay out a pretty decent amount of money. For instance, doing Sightseer and Headhunter, you'll get between $21,000 to $25,000, and if you guys do the Terabyte missions, you guys could be looking at around $30,000 per mission. It'll only take about 15 to 20 minutes to actually complete all four of these missions, and in that time, if you guys do that constantly for an entire hour, just rinse and repeat over and over and over again, you could look at making $330,000 to $440,000 per hour hour. By the way, if you guys play any of the games shown on screen, be sure to check out Digazani down below in the description and get 10% off anything you order by using code FROLIX. Obviously, if you guys are going to be completing these missions in 15 to 20 minutes, and I mean completing all four of those missions, you're going to need a good vehicle. We're going to talk about two right now, the Oppressor Mark II and the Hydra. They're both amazing vehicles. They both cost around the same amount of money. The Hydra is $3 million on the dot if you unlock the trade price, and the Oppressor Mark II is just under $3 million with the trade price unlocked as well. Let's go over a pro and con list for both of these vehicles to help you guys decide which one you want to buy considering they're both around the exact same price. Starting off with the Oppressor Mark II. Some of the pros for this vehicle are that it's easy to control, it's really easy to enter and exit, it's super simple to kill and aim with, and it also has a top speed of 130 miles per hour. The cons for this vehicle though, and I believe it really only has one, and that's going to be it only has 20 missiles. I think that is a little bit of a downside to this vehicle. Now, now let's talk about the Hydra. The Hydra's pros are it's easy to control, it has hover mode so it can perform just like an oppressor or a helicopter, it has infinite missiles and explosive MGs, and it's easy to aim and kill enemies and it has a top speed of 209 miles per hour, much quicker than the oppressor Mark II. It's actually one of the best vehicles in the game to travel from point A to point B with. More information on that in the video coming out tomorrow, stay tuned for that. Cons for the Hydra though, it takes longer to enter and exit, and it has a fairly slow acceleration. Personally for me, what I do when I'm playing GTA 5 and I need to travel anywhere or I'm doing any kind of missions, I use the Oppressor Mark II because I could just request it in and it'll spawn right next to me, unlike the Hydra where you're going to have to go to the beach or to an airfield or you're going to have to go to a helipad to pick it up, which kind of sucks unless you have it as a personal vehicle, then it'll spawn a little closer, but you'll still have to drive a distance to actually go and get it. So in my opinion, I would pick the Oppressor Mark II over the Hydra, but then again, they're both amazing vehicles, and it's personally up to you guys which one you want to pick. Next up is going to be arcades. Now you guys can purchase these for about 1.5 to I believe 2.3 or 2.5 million dollars off of the maze bank foreclosure sites. Now the only way I would say an arcade is actually useful is if you guys play with friends. If you don't, then I don't think you guys should purchase an arcade. If you play completely solo, skip past this part in the video. But if you do plan on playing with a crew, then obviously purchasing an arcade would be useful because the Diamond and Casino heist is the most profitable way that you can make money in GTA. Five. Let's go over a little summary of how much you can truly make. Like I said, the casino heist is the most profitable way to make money in GTA 5 Online. You can make millions, and I mean millions. $3.6 million is what you could steal from the vault if you get diamonds. And of course, you can get the lowest amount, around $2.1 million if you steal cash. Minus the cuts that you'll have to pay to your crew members and Lester and stuff like that, you're going to end up having to pay about 25-30% to 30 of what you guys actually end up stealing, so you'll end up making around 700 k to $1.2 million each if you steal all of the vault contents. Now, that is if you guys steal everything, and when I say 700 k to $1.2 million each, 
I mean for two people. You can easily do this heist with only two people. I only ever do this heist with two people because four people means you're just giving away more money. But then again, with four people, you could steal all of the contents from the vault and get the most amount of money stolen but then you guys are gonna end up making less. So I would still suggest doing it with only two people. And then most likely you're not gonna end up stealing all of the contents from the vault. So roughly if you split all of the cuts evenly, you'll get around 400 to $900,000 each. And it does not take long to do this heist. A lot of people think it takes forever, but if you own the oppressor or the hydra, like I just said, you'll be able to run through all of the setups in probably an hour and a half, maybe at two hours most. And then you guys just gotta do the finale in about 15 to 20 minutes and then boom you guys can get up to nine hundred thousand dollars each in about two hours which is pretty crazy so buying an arcade is obviously useful for that plus you get a master control panel in there if you want to spend an extra 1.4 million dollars but we'll talk about that in another video the arcade is definitely useful if you guys are going to be playing gta 5 and grinding with friends Next up is going to be doing special cargo. You're also going to need a CEO office if you are low on money, buy the cheapest one, which is obviously going to be the Maze Bank West. And if you guys want to spend a little bit more money, buy the Arcadius Business Center for I believe $2.2 million. Special cargo is the most profitable way to make money in GTA 5 solo. So make sure you guys remember that. Doing the casino heist is the best way to do it with a crew. And if you're doing everything solo, special cargo is the number one way to make money. Now, like I said, buy the cheapest CEO office because you're going to need it in order to actually buy a warehouse. Now, if you're going to buy a warehouse, I would suggest purchasing the large special cargo warehouses. And there is a location that you guys are going to want to buy it. It's the same one that I have right here and I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. Now let's say you guys are going to be buying this large special cargo warehouse and you're going to be filling it up and you're going to purchase three crates at a time. It'll cost you guys roughly $666,000 to buy the supplies for this warehouse and once you guys fill it up it will take roughly around seven to eight hours for you guys to actually get this entire warehouse full. But then when you do end up doing that, you'll end up selling it for about $2.2 million minus the supplies that you guys have to purchase. So you'll end up making $1.53 million profit. And per hour, that's roughly around $220,000. That's a pretty good amount of money. Now, if we are actually talking about the location I'm talking about right here, you guys could just see that highway that I drove off of. Most of the time, you're going to be taking that highway to come back to your special cargo warehouse. You can just drive straight off that highway and be at your warehouse in a matter of seconds, which is why I love this location. And you also saw how I entered the highway. There was literally a location just up the road where I could just turn straight onto an on-ramp and be on the highway in seconds. It's super useful because obviously highways are the fastest ways to get around when you guys are driving a streetcar. So that's also a great thing about this specific warehouse that I own. It is also one of the more expensive ones, but it's definitely worth the money because it's just super simple to access. And of course, it's a large special cargo warehouse. So I would highly suggest you guys think about getting a special cargo warehouse if you guys want to make some money solo. The final thing we're going to be going over is two more vehicles that you could drive around on the street. The first one is going to be the Night Shark. It costs $1.2 million, it has machine guns, and it can also take up to almost 30 homing missiles if you guys are inside and up to 9 RPGs. Now you can't shoot any guns out of the windows if you guys have the armor plating on them, but you can use the MG turrets to kill people or NPCs, and you can also tow things like the anti-aircraft trailer, but of course to operate that trailer you're going to need somebody else helping you. But the main thing about the Night Shark is that it's almost invincible. If somebody is chasing you and they have an oppressor mark too, you could just sit there and let them try to kill you. Take a look at this clip. I asked one of you guys to just blow me up. He used all of the rockets in his oppressor mark too, then got out on foot and started using his homing launcher to actually blow me up. It takes forever to destroy this thing, which is why it's an amazing vehicle at a price of 1.2 million. The second vehicle is a little bit cheaper. It's going to be the Karuma. It costs only like $700,000 to purchase, which isn't really that expensive. And if you unlock the trade price, I believe it's only like 500k. Now, it's great for doing missions against NPCs because you could shoot out of it with any gun. And of course, the only spot that you can actually get shot from is in the driver's side window. There is a tiny little glitch spot where anybody can shoot you, but most of the time you'll be fine as long as you guys don't let the NPCs shoot you through that window. It's really not that hard. And it's also bulletproof every 
everywhere except for that spot. Now, the only thing is, it takes one rocket to blow up. That's why I said it's great for NPC missions. So if you're doing special cargo, or you're doing anything in-game that requires you to go and get something, and there's going to be a lot of NPCs with guns, the Karuma is perfect for you, which is why it's used in the Fleeka job heist, because there is a ton of cops chasing after you, and they'll be shooting you, and you won't go down any health. So to go over it again, the Night Shark is perfect for public lobbies, because against any other players, it's going to be pretty hard for them to actually kill you. And the Karuma is is perfect for missions against NPCs. I would highly suggest purchasing the Night Shark because I think it's just a little bit better in a lot of different ways. The only downside is of course the armor plating. You just can't shoot your guns out of the windows. So against NPCs, you guys are just going to be stuck there using the MG turrets. But then again, it's still an amazing vehicle. Well guys, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smash a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.